Mayfield, can they do it again? Yes, they can! And the catch is made by Taj Washington, touchdown, USC! Blocked by Embiid! Timmy, yes! All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode here of the Beef Up Front podcast on PicSwap Media. Here is Ryan Coyle, as always. Today I'm here with a new kind of series I'm going to be doing throughout the the next few weeks and the next few months as we head into the spring. Now with the NFL season, college season all wrapped up behind us, we're full blown draft coverage here at Beef Up Front, and we're going to be starting a new segment today called Breakdowns with Beef where I'm going to be going through some of the top quarterback prospects throughout the uh, the college game this year that have classified or have entered the NFL draft. I'm going to be breaking down three of their games for, for some of the top of these guys. And we're going to start off today's series with Bryce Young and his game versus Alabama earlier this year. This is something I got really into last year with, with the quarterbacks. I broke down Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, Matt Corral, uh, Desmond Ritter, all, all like the top guys, I guess you could say, from last year's quarterback class that wasn't a very good class this year a lot more intriguing guys and some higher higher level talent I think out there so last year I only did audio versions where I kind of just went through my notes that I made on, on some games I thought it would be a cool kind of interactive thing to broadcast some of their games on here um, and really go through what I see and what I like about these guys what I don't like about them at, at times what I think they can get better at and, and kind of grade them based off their performance so Today's game, like I said, is going to be Bryce Young versus Tennessee. It's my kind of first time doing this on a live stream like this. So bear with me as there might be some growing pains throughout it, but excited to kind of get into this series and break down some of these quarterback prospects. I think I did a pretty good job of evaluating them last year. I had Pickett as my top guy. Um, I had Ritter as my second, I believe. Willis as my third. Corral as my fourth. Um, obviously not a very good quarterback class last year, but I was lower on Malik Willis than a lot of the – uh, media guys out there that thought he would be like a first round pick potentially Desmond Ritter I thought showed some flashes last year the Falcons might give him another run at being a quarterback the quarterback for them and then Kenny Pickett had a, a really nice second half to the season when, when he was fully healthy and the full-time starting quarterback for the Steelers so I'm excited to get into this series and, and we'll be starting off with Bryce Young today and uh, he's the kind of number one guy right now for most people you can also throw Will Levis and CJ Stroud into that conversation but Bryce Young's a, a six foot 195 pound quarterback listed at at Alabama it's going to be interesting to see his combine measurables obviously not the ideal frame and size but still a very talented player in this game versus Tennessee it was a 52-49 loss one of the better college football games of the year but he went 35 of 52 for 455 yards two touchdowns and zero interceptions and he had four rushes for negative four yards in college it's kind of I guess harder to talk about rushing yards for a quarterback it's more so just looking at the tape because they rule the the sacks in the nf or the sacks in college as negative rushing yards and they don't do that in the nfl so he'll he'll see some negative effects of that in, in his game i guess uh because he's not a quarterback that has many design runs he's more of more so of an ad libber and making plays outside of the pocket using his legs and his mobility so we're just going to run through this game uh and i guess guess just see how it goes go go through his reads go through his progressions kind of and, and kind of talk about some of the stuff I, I like to see out of his game. So uh, without further ado, here we go. Bryce Young versus Tennessee. Um, so here's the first play. These are all just going to be throws. I like that, his ability to kind of change his arm angle and, and, and get it around the defender there on the bubble screen there. This play, I think he shows some pretty good velocity to get the ball outside. He kind of read the field, scanned it, and got it out of his hands pretty quickly. Um See, that's something that we're going to be talking about a lot there. So we'll, we'll re rewind that a little bit. One thing that you'll hear me talk about a lot with Bryce Young from watching at least this game thus far, um, like I said earlier, we're going to be watching three games for each quarterback prospect. So we're going to be going through their entire game, every throw that they're making. Um, so we're, we're going to see some some similarities, some differences, some trends in, in some of these guys' games. One thing that you'll hear me say a lot about Bryce Young, at least just from watching this game, doesn't always step up into the pocket. And I think growing up being the most talented kid on the field all the time, every time he stepped on the football field, he's able to kind of get away with a lack of mechanics, I guess, and kind of following through and stepping up in the pocket and delivering bullets. 
Now when he goes to the NFL, there's going to be a lot tighter coverages, and I think he's going to have to refine some of that to his game. He throws a lot off his back foot here. This one uh, winds up being a bad pass. No real receiver in the intended area, but you'll see when he gets pressured, he kind of sits back on that back foot and kind of throws it out instead of stepping up into the pocket. And when you see him throughout the game, there's a few times where he does step up, and it looks a lot better and I think more clean and accurate. And then he has some of these times where – it, you're not going to be able to step up and, and throw seeds every time. You're going to have to ad lib and throw some some bad, uh, not bad passes, but not the ideal mechanics, I guess you could say. But some, I think that his coaches are certainly going to clean up whoever whoever winds up drafting him. So you see this pressure here, just kind of launches it off the back foot. That was more so a throwaway. Still had some pretty good velocity behind it, but you see just all the weight shifted there on the back foot, and he winds up taking a big hit as well. Here he's able to step up in the pocket. Um, winds up being an incomplete pass, but that's one of the things I, I kind of like about him best. Uh, you're going to see it here. They bring some pressure, but he's got really good feet in the pocket, and he can step up, and, and whether or not he steps up and delivers a throw or he wants to use his legs, he has both of those uh, kind of things in his game right now. So you're going to see pressure come here off the edge, uh, and I think he feels it well, and he keeps the ball nice and tight it, up to his shoulders kind of. Um, doesn't kind of leave it leave it back hanging with, with the defensive end or the linebacker being able to kind of come in and swat it from behind. So this is an incomplete pass, but still one of like uh, intriguing play. I think but you see some good footwork from him as well as a nice pocket presence. Steps up, he feels it there. He keeps the ball nice and tight. Um, unable to deliver the pass, but that's a tough pass to complete. He got a third and six here. Another one where he's kind of sitting on that back foot a little bit. I, I'd like to just see him step up and, and deliver that clean. I think he might be able to hit his receiver in stride a little bit and maybe he can turn up field for a, a couple more yards. This is still a really good throw, um, a little bit behind the receiver, but that, that he shows his good arm velocity on that one. <clears throat> kind of the, the replay there from that play. All right, so you got a second and 19 here. See that one? He he kept, he turns. See that's one of his his best throws of this game. And, and I know there he's got a clean prop pocket there, and he's not really getting touched. He's got the ability to step up, um, but that's one of the things I kind of like best about him when when he does do these clean kind of mechanics. Look, he turns levels right down the field. Beautiful ball just dropped in the bucket there. Just watch that again. That's a, a very special throw. Turns, plant, steps into it, bullet. When, when he has his clean mechanics, it, it, it doesn't get much more perfect than some of the throws that he's able to have out there. Another play where you see kind of his ballerina feet and, and able to kind of just move around in the pocket. And I know, like I said, I, I want to see him kind of step up more and have a more clean, refined step up in the pocket when he delivers his passes. But there's going to be plays where you're going to have to throw it um, off balance and stuff, and, and he shows the ability to do that there. Another good play where, where he's got pocket awareness, shows some mobility. And this is another good thing about him. He makes grown men, SEC defenders miss time and time again. That, that play might not amount to nothing, but – he has the ability to just watch, stop on a dime, and completely pivot out of that, does it again there. He still continues to keep his eyes downfield and deliver the pass. Here backed up into his own end zone. you got to have good pocket awareness. Another play where he kind of sits on his back foot. Uh, that, that's more so a drop, a good pass there, but sits on that back foot. I'd like to see him step up a little bit more. Unable to convert the snap there. Still able to get rid of it in, in time. Uh, so, some good field awareness, I, I think you could say, on that play. Now, that one, that, that's one of those plays where, all right, we're at third and, third and 22. Maybe even just if you're the offensive coordinator there, call like a draw or something. Just let's not get sacked in the end zone. But you got to know pressure is going to be coming there on third and 22, and you have to be able to – I think just get rid of the football. Uh, just li live to see another live to see another down. You're not. You're most likely not getting a first down on that play. That's one of those uh, kind of head scratching plays by Young. One of the very few in this game. <clears throat> so 
It's another play where he, he has those kind of ballerina feet. He's able to escape some, some traffic, unable to convert the pass there, but that's right there to the, to the receiver. He NFL receiver might be catching that ball. I know that's Jameer Gibbs, a high, highly talented running back, um, but I think an NFL receiver has a, a pretty good chance of bringing that one in. Another one where he's able to just read the field quickly, get the ball out of his hands, and, and deliver the deliver the ball to an open receiver. He he's very good at. I think as you as you kind of watch him, you get a good feel. He's a very good he's very good quarterback at taking what the defense gives you. Um, he reminds me a lot out there of just like a point guard playing basketball, where he's just going to kind of scan the field and, and find what's there. He's going to let let the game kind of come to him and, and not force plays. And I think that's one of his best attributes. He's certainly a very good playmaker and, and very good at ad-libbing. We'll see that throughout the game. Um, and, and his numbers reflect that in this one. It's all it's all not about the stats at the end of the day when, when you're evaluating a prospect, but 455 yards on, and two touchdowns in this one, um, and he leads his team to 49 points. You see his ability to go out there and make plays kind of when it matters most. But he's also, I think that's one of his best attributes, just being like that that pure point guard out on the floor. And just if he needs to dink and dunk his way down the field, he's going to do it. But he's going to make some tough throws having to do that as well. Got him going in here to the red zone. Incomplete pass there. Ball gets bad at the line of scrimmage. It's another one of those things where it's not stepping up in the pocket. It kind of throws it off the back foot. I know stepping out of the pocket might not have fixed that one that much, but uh, another instance there where I'd like to see him clean that up. There's another one of those plays where he's kind of dinking, dunking down the field at Alabama. He's got a bunch of playmakers around him. He knows he doesn't have to do it all. Um, I'd like to see him in uh, obviously a good situation in the NFL where he has guys that he can kind of still operate in, in this manner. There's another play where, like at the first play of the game, he's able to use a different arm angle to get the ball into the out to the to the receiver in the screen. That one steps up. There he goes. Steps up in the pocket, and that's that pass reminds me a lot of the one Jalen Hurts threw the other night in the Super Bowl to Dallas Goddard. That's a dart. That receiver is draped all over him, puts it just above his outstretched hand, um, and that's only a spot where, where the receiver's catching it. That This is a very similar play and third of Jalen Hurts from the other night. Steps up right there, loads and transfers his, his way forward, and is able to complete that dime. <clears throat> Very impressive play here by by uh, Bryce Young, where he he can run, he has the speed and ability, but look, he's outnumbered. We'll see this on we'll see it on this play right here. He's outnumbered here. There's there's three defenders chasing him. He keeps his eyes downfield. He he keeps the ball ready to be to be thrown in a thrown position, and he's able to deliver a passing coverage there in the red zone. Um, he always is keeping his eyes downfield. That's one of the more impressive things about him. He might have been able to hit the guy on the back back pylon as well, which he he does hit a receiver on the back line of the end zone later in the game too. <clears throat> steps up, delivers a seed. When he steps up, it, it's almost a perfect pass every time. Loads up, transfers his way forward, steps up in the pocket. Um, and, and follows through and delivers a great pass. Another instance there. When he's not thrown off his back foot, it, it's a perfect pass almost every time. And I think coaches and scouts are going to notice that and really talk and, and harp on those benefits. Here's another seam. I mean, just shows the arm strength there. Obviously, he's throwing that one away, but he can really he can really throw the football when, when he when he's properly having those mechanics or, or having those mechanics proper. Kind of off the back foot there. Underthrown a little bit. You could see that it's a very nice play by the receiver. The DB doesn't make a turn on the ball, uh, so he gets a little bit lucky on that one. Another play, look at him here, keeping his eyes downfield, and he hits the receiver on the that back end zone line. That's one of the tougher throws to make just because of the lack of space. You have to fit it in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. He has he, – he's – we'll rewind to the beginning of this play here. So you see he's got the three receivers out to his right, uh, only one to the left. So you, you would think that there's going to be either a rollout here most likely to one of these guys, or we could see him kind of flooding that way. Um, he knows, I, I guess, out of this co route concept, one of these guys is going to be working that back end zone line, and he just keeps his eyes downfield the entire time. 
Um, and, and being able to fit the ball into that tight of a space is what makes him a very special quarterback prospect. See here, keeps his eyes downfield, feet always moving, and he delivers it in there. You see that's a better, even better angle, kind of throwing it through that zone there. Um, that might not be a catch on Sundays, but Saturdays it, it works, and NFL receiver is going to be grabbing that one as well. Steps up here, bit underthrown. Uh, that's one of the knocks I kind of had on him. He So far he hasn't shown it that much. I mean, we're still only into the beginning of the third quarter here, but his deep ball I do think needs a little bit of work. Um, he had that one really nice one earlier in the game where I said he, you know, he got it, he turned, he planted, and he just fired it downfield, stepped into it, right kind of like a drop in the bucket throw. He had that other one uh, a few plays ago where he threw it a little underneath, and, and that one was uh, this one is underthrown as well. Hits a receiver nicely there over the middle. Another instance using that different arm angle to get the ball out of his hands and, and complete the screen. We see that out of like a Matthew Stafford a lot. Steps up here, and that's a, a play where he's – that's a kind of got to have it one for a guy as special as him. He's got the time in the pocket. He's able to step up. He's got all that open field in front of him. The This safety over here, he's worried about this receiver. This – this I believe this is a linebacker running with the tight end here. Might be even a receiver as well. Not uh, that aware of Alabama's personnel on the field right now. But this is a kind of got to have it throw. He he shows the arm strength and the ability to step up and, and deliver a pass with very good on it. But this this is a play that, that could be a touchdown and a miss here by Bryce Young, a rare miss in this game for him. He's just got to put that ball into the middle of the field. He even put it a little bit too close to that safety. Um, looks like they're in like a cover two look here with, with the him kind of carrying him, carrying there through man. But if he puts that like anywhere over here towards the ref, that's a that should be a walk-in touchdown. And, and just a little bit overthrown there. Another play here where I talked about earlier, he's just very good at making guys miss, resetting and keeping his eyes downfield. He's not looking to run and get yards with his feet. He's looking to make you miss at reset and, and deliver a good ball. Another instance where that's a very special play. He he's getting pressured. He sees that coming off the edge. He's able to feel that. But there's like a there's a path here where all right, he's got this this grass in front of him where he might be able to run and get those four yards for the first down. Or he keeps his eyes downfield. He has the ball in like a throwing position. He's not just holding it, dangling it by its side, not loosely carrying it. He's ready to throw at all times, and he's keeping his eyes down the field, and he steps up and he delivers a strike on the run while getting downfield and is able to deliver a really good pass here. Another special throw right there over the outstretched hand of a, def of a defender. Very, very special throw there by Bruce Young. That's a better throw to the running back. I think one of the things that he struggled with most this game is getting the ball out in front of the running back. And maybe on some of these screens, he's been a little bit behind. This is more of like a wheel route kind of. Uh, he's got this guy going up the field. He's able to lead him, and, and he puts him in good position there to score. Feels the pressure, able to spin out of it, make one guy miss, make two guy miss. Don't like that throw there in that scenario. This is a – it's third and goal. Uh, I know the college kicker situation isn't ideal, but this is a situation where I, I would most likely not throw this kind of jump ball. He does get lucky and get the, the pass interference, and they're able to move up. Uh, so good for him on that one. But this is a, a risky throw and a play where Tennessee potentially intercepts this, and, and you're not, you wind up getting a chance at no points instead. But they do, they do get the, the penalty there. Delivers a, a seed across the middle. Another instance where he steps up in the pocket, delivers a, a really good pass to a guy on the run. The tight end doesn't block his man there. That just screws up that entire play. Here's one of those plays where, all right, second and 12, let's just dink and dunk. Let's get five yards. Um, I think 
that's another thing where he he doesn't like to try and force too much at times. That throw down the field earlier was one of the few, I think, forces he had in this game. And, and that's the first time I think we've kind of seen him run. That was – I'm not really sure what he's thinking there. He had the first down if he just went. He might have taken – a big hit, but he still took a big hit there by kind of just stopping, just slide there. But that's one of the the few times we see him tuck it and run and and, and looking to use his legs for the first down. Um, something I think he might do more, but I do love his, the way he's consistently keeping his eyes down the field. But if he just keeps going, that's a first down. I'm not sure what it got ruled there, but he takes a big hit there, and a guy at his frail size, he needs to learn how to, to slide and not take big hits like that or we'll see what happened to kind of Kyler Murray over these past two years where he's kind of wearing down towards the end. But I really like his ability to kind of turn his shoulder there, escape from the defender, and get the ball out of his hands. This is Jameer Gibbs, a potential first-round running back. He, he knows that's a safety blanket there. Uh, let me get the ball to him and let him make a play. Doesn't feel the pressure there. That's a kind of a rare mistake by him. Uh, kind of makes the first guy miss here on this one, but then you got another guy coming in. At the NFL, you're not going to be able to make guys miss left and right. That was one of the things uh, before he makes his play that I liked about Malik Willis last year, just being able to make guys miss. Um, but at the NFL, you're, you're playing against obviously much better players and much better athletes than, than some of these guys that, that you're going up against in college. So you can't always count on, on that athleticism at the next level each and every play. Great play there, though. We'll rewind that one as I kind of cut it off. But feels pressure, steps up, still eyes downfield, finds an open receiver. Let him do the rest of the work. Great play there. Keeps his eyes downfield. And if he wanted to, he might have been able to have a touchdown pass there to number 17 over the top. Would have been a tough throw, though. Here he goes again, using his legs. Makes a guy miss uh, originally, but that's one of those plays where I think he's better off just tucking and running. You're, you're five yards out. Let me throw my body out in the line for a touchdown. Keeps his eyes downfield here. Makes a guy miss. Makes him look silly. Uh, then we're, we're in the third and goal now. I think he might have been closer if he just had taken that first initial run. Delivers a strike there. That's off the, the tight end's hands. That's got to be a catch. You go fourth and goal here. Able to step up. And like I've been saying throughout, keeps his eyes downfield and is always looking to make the right play. He might have been able to run that one in, but steps up, always has that ball ready, high and tight in a throwing position, is able to just dink it off there for a touchdown. Uh, I believe that tied up the game as well. He might have had 17 to run across that back line again if he was able to, uh, if 81 wasn't able to flash open. Step up there. I'm telling you, man, every time he, he delivers that weight forward, a great pass from him. Puts his running back in a bit of harm's way there, but able to pick up a key third and two. A strong pass over the middle there. Slipped a bit on that one. Still able to get it out, it, even in the face of pressure. To live, stand in there and deliver a nice pass over the middle. A clutch time here, 49-49. Throws off the back foot, getting pressured. It winds up with an incompletion there. Tennessee down the stretch here really bring, brought some pressure, and Alabama wasn't able to pick it up. Um, but, like, that's a big play. Third and ten, you're going to give your kicker a chance to go in there and win the football game now. But I know I'm harping on this, but this has just been my biggest thing with him throughout this game. When he steps up when he's getting pressured. Um, he's, he's delivering a strike nine times out of ten. When he's throwing off the back foot when he gets the pressure – that's when we kind of see him struggle the most. Um, just watch this third and 10 again here. A huge third and 10. You're giving your uh, your field goal kicker a chance to win. Step up, bam. Delivers it over, over the middle, out in front of your receiver, and, and give him a little bit more room to run. And some of these plays, I believe, they're just trying to – they're no, they know they're in field goal range. Alabama winds up missing a field goal here, and Tennessee kicks a game-winning field goal. Um, but I think Bryce Young played just as bad as, as well as you could play in this game. That was a that was a bad incompletion there. Uh, that ball is a little too low. If he hits him there, he he makes twelve miss. That could be a, a big gain and, and a, maybe a chip shot field goal. 
that's that's pressure there. That might not have been in, that might not have been completed anyway. But that was another instance where he threw it off his back foot. But all in all, a very impressive game there from Bryce Young. Um, I just have my summary for that one. He he showcased that he's a gamer. He's tough. He's athletic, and he can throw lasers. Um, a true team guy as well. He's not really looking to get his. He gets the ball out quickly, and he always is having his eyes downfield looking to make the right play. Can use different arm angles and shows the ability to hit different throws as well. I do think he needs to clean some things up mechanically and improve him stepping up in the pocket. But he certainly has a lot to work with. I gave him an 8 out of 10 for this game. But that'll do it uh, for the first breakdown here of Bryce Young. We're going to be doing a couple more as well for the uh, projected number one quarterback. We're going to be breaking down his LSU and Texas game as well. So if you like this one, make sure to uh, tune in for the next episode. Um, Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we will talk next time.